We're continuing on from the last video, and we're still implementing an integration flow from a SQL database with a join to an LDAP directory, and then output to a target system, as yet unnamed. And we started out by simplifying this, replacing the target system connector with a file system, so we could control our progress visually. Then we simplified even further by removing the LDAP join. But that's what we're putting back in again here. We'll do this by taking our assembly line with two connectors and adding a third, an LDAP connector to look up additional information from our server. So here's our assembly line as it stands. We have two connectors, one reading from our database, one writing to file, and here is all the data moving in and out of our flow. I have already prepared a connector here in my library under resources connectors. So now I can just drag it into my assembly line wherever I want it to show up in the flow. TDI remembers this inheritance, and that means that if I have to make changes to any of the parameters for this connector or for this connection, I can do that once in my resource library, and all of my assembly lines will be in step. I'm going to rename this component to join from LDAP, so its purpose in the assembly line is more apparent. My library component doesn't have any input maps set up, and this means I'll have to do this here, so I'm going to use the data browser. The data browser detects what type of connector I'm using, in this case LDAP, and reformats the display accordingly. At the top here, I can see various information about the server itself. I can also explore those branches of the tree that are visible to me with the credentials that I used in the connector. I can also use the Next button here to have TDI return these as attributes in a schema, and then select those that I want to bring into the assembly line. When we close the browser, we can see that our input map is in place. Now our last step is to tell the connector how we define a match for the lookup, and this is done in the link criteria tab. As with most things in TDI, if you want to, you can script this yourself. So you write a snippet of script that returns the LDAP search filter, or the notes search formula, or the where clause for a JDBC lookup. Or instead, you can add simple link criteria like this, using the attributes that are available to you both in the assembly line as well as in the schema of the connector that you just discovered data for. And then the connector interface converts this to whatever the underlying search syntax needs to be. Before I test this, I want an overview of how data is moving in and out of my assembly line. And I can get that by clicking on data flow. And also I'm going to limit the number of entries that my assembly line will process and I do that by putting a cap on my iterator here at 25. And then we run it by pressing this button here. This transfers our solution to the running server that TDI maintains for us and instructs it to run this one assembly line, capturing all the log output here on screen. This output includes messages indicating that some of these users were not found in the LDAP directory. The behavior to print these messages, as well as the decision to skip these individuals, was made here in the join from LDAP connector in the hooks. Hooks are waypoints in the built-in workflows of TDI, where you can write a snippet of script to either extend the built-in behaviors or to override them. This hook, on no match, is being inherited from the connector that I dragged into this assembly line in the first place. If we take a look at the code itself, it's very simple. Task, which is the variable that gives us access to our assembly line, is instructed to log the message that the user was not found in LDAP, and includes the full name attribute from the work entry. Then the system is told to skip this entry. And finally, I use a data browser to examine my output. Here I can see that the new attributes are also showing up and I can use the, the parser, which is already set up, to read this data as structured information, making it a little bit easier to control my output. And that completes this step. In the next video, we'll be adding data transformation and filtering to our assembly line.